And hello, Jets fans, and welcome. I know you probably weren't expecting to hear from me for a little bit, but big news today for the New York Jets and their organization that kind of came out of nowhere, but I'm going to break down all the big news, of course, today and why this news is great. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for joining us here today. As always, Go down and click the subscribe button if you want any more New York Jets NFL draft content. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter, which is now in the chat. Our link there is in the chat. And of course, your comments and questions in the chat, as always, would love to answer. On the heels of the national championship, though, the New York Jets have gone another break. And look, let's be tough. Let's be frank. This season has been tough for Jet fans. It really has been. It's been hard to watch. It's been hard to sit through the 17 games. But in all honesty, the Jets have actually gotten a lot of lucky breaks this year. And what do I mean by that? When you really look at it, when if I was to tell you what would happen in September in terms of the draft, the Jets have really actually lucked out. When they made the trade for Jamal Adams, the Jets were hoping that they'd get mid-20 first-round draft picks. They end up with the top 10 pick for Jamal Adams. Then you look at the Carolina Panthers when they traded Sam Darnold. You were hoping that second round pick would be middle of the second round. It ends up being a top 40 pick in the entire NFL draft. So the New York Jets have gotten incredibly fortunate in terms of their draft trades and their draft positioning. And now they've gotten another huge step. Today, the NFL announced that the New York Jets coaching staff, Robert Sala, will be coaching at the Reese Senior Bowl on February 5th. And this is huge. This is the first time the Jets as an organization have actually coached the Senior Bowl since 1979, which is pretty amazing when you think about all the times the Jets have been low in the draft. They haven't been able to coach the Senior Bowl. And this is big for a myriad of reasons. And the Jets actually lucked out very well here because traditionally – this goes to the coaching staffs that are set with the number one and two picks. Now, of course, Jacksonville fired Urban Meyer, so they forfeited their right. And it looked like the Texans were going to be the other squad with the Lions. But the Texans have not made it official about their coaching decision. And, I mean, we talk about the Giants coaching decision up there. The Texans head coaching spot, they haven't made an affirmative decision, which I don't know how you would feel if you're on that Texan staff right now, basically, that, A, even if you come back, they just potentially cost you a chance to coach the senior bowl. And I get it. Every team has scouts to the senior bowl. The senior bowl isn't the end all be all of everything, but it is a very crucial step in the process. And it is very important in terms of the NFL draft for a myriad of reasons, but mostly for the jets in a year where this team and this organization really needs to hit home run the draft. We have an organization that basically has two drafts and then one. When you really think about it, they have two first-round picks, two second-round picks, and a couple of fourth-round picks. They needed all the breaks they could get. And again, this is just icing on the cake. Is it going to determine if they have a great draft? No. But again, this gives a coaching staff the opportunity to work with players. And this is incredibly important because we are talking about a myriad of talented players that the Jets have the opportunity to work with, to see in person, to see how they practice, see how they approach a practice, see how they fit in a potential scheme, see how they interact with coaches, see how coachable they are. And especially now where it looks like we are going to have a normal draft process this year, but we with COVID, who knows if maybe workouts get limited what happens at the combines in terms of how many people can perform, how many people can show up. So again, having this one-on-one -on -one opportunity is incredibly important and incredibly beneficial. And there's a lot of good prospects. I put on Twitter a couple that the Jets should be looking at. And again, you look at the draft. To me, the Senior Bowl is crucial, not necessarily for the Jets' first-round picks. To me, it's more important for the day two and day three picks. Because a lot of the prospects, there are some very good ones in the Senior Bowl. But when we really look at like the top-end prospects, a lot of them are underclassmen. A lot of them are juniors coming out. And really, a lot of them aren't participating. But again, if the Jets trade back to the mid-first round, you see a lot of these guys that are participating. And again, this is really going to help the Jets on day two and day three of the draft. And again... You find players in the Senior Bowl. I think one of the best examples of the Senior Bowl was Dak Prescott, where 
he really wasn't on the Cowboys radar. He actually was on the opposite team, but because of how well he did in the senior bowl, it made the Cowboys scouts go back, review his tape, go more in depth on him. And eventually they drafted him and the rest, as we know, is history. So again, the senior bowl offers an opportunity for this coaching staff to really be able to shift their focus and be able to focus on certain players. And again, the timing of the senior bowl is also important as well. Like I'll get into more about the little bit more the XSOs prospects that they can target and how the coaching staff can evaluate. But to me, one of the biggest aspects of the senior bowl is it allows this organization and it allows the jets and it allows Robert Salad to get an idea of what this draft looks like rounds two through five and help determine where they can invest their priorities in free agency. Now, what do I mean by that? And now let me go into a little bit more depth. One of the key positions I think we can all agree for the New York Jets is tight end. And the Senior Bowl, luckily this year, has a plethora of the top tight ends, especially like you look, uh, Charlie Collar for Iowa State, Isaiah Likely from Coastal Carolina, Trey McBride is the number one tight end on my board, Colorado State, Jeremy Ruckert from Ohio State. I mean, there's a lot of tight ends that will be at the Senior Bowl. Now, a couple things can happen, but here's a couple of the scenarios that help the Jets and help determine how they attack the offseason. If the Jets really like the tight end prospects at the Senior Bowl, and they believe that there's two or three, maybe three or four that they feel can really help this team and that they don't have to spend a lot of money in free agency and that they can address the tight end position in the draft, then that helps with their strategy. They don't necessarily have to go out and spend big money on a tight end. But if they go out of this saying like, look, Trey McBride, we would love to have him. We'll look to try to draft him maybe in the second round. But the other guys, you know, they have some decent upside, but we don't think they'll be able to make an impact for our team in the next two years. Really developmental players, guys we want to take maybe late on day three, mid-day three. So for right now, we don't really believe that they can help make an immediate impact. That could also dictate how they address the free agency period. I'm just focused on the tight ends. But again, if they don't feel there's a lot of depth, then they can go out and address that free agency and tell Joe Douglas, like, look, we need to make priority free agency about the tight end position because we don't feel there's a lot of depth in this draft. We don't feel that with the players we saw out there that we can get two, maybe three tight ends. I mean, I think the Jets are going to have to add at least two, minimum two, probably three tight ends, but let's say a minimum of two. If the Jets come out of this saying, like, look, we think there's some good depth. We can get two tight ends in this draft and they can help us right away. Then the Jets don't have to focus in free agency. But if they come out saying, like, look, the most we're going to get is maybe one. Then it shifts the priorities for the free agency and how they attract the tight end position. And again, you look, there's a lot of prospects that you look at late day, day one, early round two um, in this. I mean, a couple of names that popped up. Uh, Jahan Dotson, the wide receiver from Penn State, popped up in there. Offensive line, Danielle Folelli from Minnesota. Uh, Burnham Raymond from Central Michigan. Trevor Penning, Northern Iowa, the uh, the tackle from there. I mean, you see Jameer Salier. He was in the game last night for Georgia. Uh, the edge rushers, there's some decent ones in this one, too. Um, you know, I can never say this last name right. Arnold uh Abi Kitty from uh, Penn State, uh, Jermaine Johnson from Florida State as an edge rusher, uh, Jeremiah Moon from Florida, uh, Tyreek Smith, Ohio State, and then even in the linebackers, you got a couple like Channing Tindall and uh, Qua Walker and some good corners, and then especially safety. I think safety is going to be a position the Jets are going to have to address. Like, do they feel Jaquan Brisker from Penn State can be a guy? Do they feel that? Uh, Leon O'Neill from Texas A&M is a guy that can step in. So again, there's a lot of positions that the Jets can look at, and it gives them an idea of what they can get in the draft and helps them evaluate the free agency period. Again, if you feel like you can get some quality safeties in this draft, especially later, and there's good depth, then maybe you don't have to spend money on getting a safety or you can move the resource into finding a lockdown corner or a pass rusher. And it also could dictate how they attack this draft i mean with the fourth pick in the draft you're not going to get one of the top two pass rushers so the jets go 
We like George Karloftis. He's like an A minus player. But if we trade back to the mid first round and get an extra third round pick, we can get two very good B plus players. We can get a good pass rusher later in the draft. Like we feel there's a pass rusher we can get late in the first round, the mid first round that it fits our system a little bit better than like a George Karloftis. And we get the benefit of adding more players. Because again, to me, the strength of this draft isn't necessarily like even we look at the top players. Uh, Thibodeau and Hutchinson, I think they're going to be unbelievable pros, but they're not like a Chase Young coming out. They don't seem like that generational player. Of course, we can always be wrong, but I mean, you really look like after them, there's a big drop off. And then even like in the top 10, there's a lot of like Kyle Hamilton, Dean, there's like three or four players like, okay, they'll be very good from day one. And then there's another drop off. And then after that, you look, there's like probably good. 25 to 35 players who are very good players. And to me, if the Jets can trade back and get more picks, and this could be a way to help evaluate that. Again, if you're working with these guys one-on-one, I mean, Robert Sala is a player's coach. And Robert Sala knows what he's looking for on this defense. And one of the encouraging things I've been saying all year about this Jets coaching staff is I've seen these players get better every single week under this coaching staff, and they seem to know their players very well. So I just look at this as a situation where the Jets come in, they look in and say, okay, this guy fits the mindset of the football player we're looking for. He's a hard worker. He's a grinder. Maybe they get there and they thought that there was a guy that worked hard or they thought didn't have any question marks. They seem kind of lackadaisically going through the drills. It's not really his priority. And does that shift their priority on him? Does it move him down the draft board? Because again, like to me, the senior bowl is kind of like the combine. I think it's better than the combine because again, you're having guys, it's, even though it's scrimmages, you're having guys with the pads on, you're having them doing football drills, doing football activities, doing scrimmages. And again, it's not just guys running around without shoulder pads, just making plays, just doing tests and physical tests in the combine. So it's basically a practice. And in football, a lot of the times you can tell a lot about a player with how they approach practice. So Robert Sala and the staff might be behind a player, but then if they see his practice habits aren't good, that could drop him off the board. And then maybe there's a guy that they've kind of overlooked that comes out, does an unbelievable job, is going 100 miles an hour, is catching every ball, is making a play, and they go, okay, we we know about this guy, but let's go back and look at his tape. Let's see what he can do. And again, it's like, oh, okay, his tape's better than we thought. This is he makes more plays than they think. And you know what? He could fit in our scheme. So again, I think that this is huge for the New York Jets because this is a critical NFL draft. And again, every team's at the senior bowl, but being able to be on the field and have that direct access to players, especially now when we are talking about uh, with COVID, the restrictions of access to players, I think that that's a big benefit for the Jets. And again, it's not necessarily finding the cream of the crop or even like the first rounders, but it's finding guys who could fit day two and day three. And to me, seniors are the type of players that Joe Douglas will target. I mean, I look at his draft history and you look at the guys he's been trying to draft. He's been trying to draft guys that have been multi-year starters in college. He usually doesn't go for the one-year wonder. He wants production on tape. He's probably looking for guys that can stay healthy. And if these senior players have put a lot of production on tape, have been consistent, have been able to stay healthy, I do think that will help them stand out to Joe Douglas and other type of players that they're looking for. Again, Joe Douglas and Robert Sauer are looking for guys that absolutely love football. They're looking for grinders. They're looking for guys that are the first ones in, last ones out. And, of course, they're looking for guys that really – are just productive and can go out there every single day. And a lot of these seniors, especially the later ones, like they've had to work, they've had to get into these opportunities. And sometimes they only play as a senior because they're behind great players in front of them. But you look to the seniors coming out are a little bit more mature. They're usually more ready for the NFL, close to like redshirt sophomores, just physically. So again, I mean, I think this is the type of, thing that joe douglas is looking for i mean you you look like if a player's talented and he feels he can take a risk on him i do think he would do that especially for the talent but again like you look at the history of his first two drafts most of the guys he's drafted they've had a lot of time under their belt 
He's not afraid to take the seniors. He wants guys that have been within a system that have been highly productive. And again, I think this is good. Would love to hear your thoughts about the Jets getting the senior bowl opportunity. The chat is open as always. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter. The link to my Twitter account is in the chat as well. Jets fans. And, you know, I've already gone on Twitter today talking about a couple of prospects that the Jets should look at within the uh, within the draft. I mean, again, primarily focusing on the tight end. Uh, I had Isaiah Likely, Trey McBride, and uh, Jeremy Ruckert. And, uh, you know, I, I think that there's a couple offensive linemen that they'll look at. Edge rusher is important. Again, it's going to be interesting to see how the Jets attack this because the more film I've watched and the more I really look at it, I see a lot of mock drafts going with George Karlaftis. But again, he's more of a power rusher. And I really think that I know Carl Lawson is more of a speed rusher. I just think the Jets really want to burn her off the edge because they have guys that are more power rushers and interior rushers. I mean, they have John Franklin Myers that plays inside, Quentin Williams, Sheldon Rankings. Again, I don't think interior pass rusher, which to me, what Carl Loftus is more of, really fits. So again, like could a guy like Ojobu, I know he's not a senior, but I could they be looking for more of a speed guy off the edge? And again, where can they get him in the draft? Do they feel they can propel back to the teens and still get a good speed or edge rusher while getting more draft capital? I do see them potentially doing that. And again, wide receiver is going to be interesting how the Jets approach that position. Again, we talked about last night. Um Williams goes down in that national championship game, looks like an ACL probably out and probably takes him off the Jets board. So again, do the Jets take a receiver in the top 10? Do they wait to the second round? Where do they address the tight end position? How many tight ends are they going to draft? There's so much the Jets can do. And this draft is vitally important. I mean, they need to basically hit on most of these draft picks. I mean, they can miss on maybe two or three of the later picks, but especially the first picks in the first two rounds, they really need to get four players that are going to contribute if they don't trade. I, I really see the Jets trading and moving around. But again, there's a lot of good players in this draft. If you want to check it out, NFL.com has the full list. And it's also going to be interesting, too, because a lot of the quarterbacks in this draft are going to be at the Senior Bowl. So could it be a situation where the Jets can get some good insight on these quarterbacks and get an idea of what teams are interested to potentially trade up to four? Because again... I mean, if Houston moves on from a head coach, are they going to keep Mills? Where are they doing a quarterback? And again, we don't know what's going on with the Giants. We don't know what's going on with Joe Judge. We don't know what's going to be on with their new general manager. Would they be in the market for a quarterback? And if both those teams are in the market for a quarterback, the Jets become a popular pick at four. Like could a team try to leapfrog the Giants or then leapfrog the Panthers at six to make sure they get up there and get a quarterback? I mean, I do think as the process goes on, we're going to see more quarterbacks move up the board. And again, I could just see the Jets moving back because they have so many holes on this team. Like, I really don't think they're going to stick at four if they can make the choice. Again, if if a Neal falls to them, if one of the two edge rushers falls to them, we've seen stranger things happen. They could definitely still stay there. But to me, the senior bowl, like, this is just great because really Jet fans, including myself, I didn't think they were going to get the senior bowl. I really thought the Texans were going to get the senior bowl. So having this coaching staff be able to work with Joe Douglas and be able to go back. And again, I said this last year is to me, Joe Douglas seems to be on a much better page and rapport with Robert Sala, because you look at the players that he got for Adam Gase's system. And you look at the players he's gone for Robert Sala's system and the type of players Robert Sala wants the players he got in this last draft, not only, fit the system better, perform better. But again, they got better throughout the season. And we still have a lot of questions about that 2020 draft class. But again, I think Douglas, a lot of that was finding players for Adam Gase. And now Robert Sala can come back to him after the senior bowl. And basically they can go over their draft board, especially the seniors and go, okay, we had him at the senior bowl. We like this about him. We like this, this, and this. Here's some of the drawbacks. Or there's some guys that maybe Joe Douglas was higher on. And Sal just goes, look, uh, talented player. But really, I just seeing him out there, I don't think he fits what we're trying to do. I just don't think he's dedicated to the practice as much. He just seems to kind of be going through the motions. I mean, I know this player over here, though, he's not as high on your board. But 
I really like the way he was getting up field, had a really good job of change of direction, or even going through and like, hey, Joe, like I know we haven't really talked about player X, but you know, he was out there making plays, no fear. His motor was always running out there. He was just making play after play after play. And again, like we really need that on that defense is someone that can track the ball as well as he can. We probably need to take another look. And if the tape checks out, that could be a guy that Jets draft. So again, I think that this is instrumental for the Jets. I think that this is huge for this organization going forward. And again, the Jets have gotten incredibly lucky. I mean, we talk about the misfortunes of this franchise. We talk about how bad it has been. And you want to look for a silver lining. I mean, to me, the way the draft is potentially shaping up this year could be an incredible change of fortune for the Jets. And again, they have to hit on these draft picks, but you look coming into this season, like before training camp, the Jets were able to get an extra fourth round pick for Chris Herndon. You didn't think the Seattle Seahawks would fall apart and end up giving the Jets the 10th pick in the draft. The Panthers, you didn't expect, especially when that team started 3-0, and to basically finish and give the Jets a pick that's going to be in the top 40 in the second round and gives the Jets a pick that is highly, highly mobile. They can use it to get back into the first round. They can use it, propel back a couple spots, get a couple picks. Again, Jets only one third round pick. Do they turn that second into another two and a three or do they add another two and a four? There's a lot they can do. And again, the draft talk around the Jets is going to be the main conversation especially on this channel with our mock drafts going forward. We're going to have a lot to talk about, but what's going to help is being having this hands-on experience and having all of the coaching staff being able to work with these players, seeing what these players can do, see how these players take coaching. Because again, they're going to need guys that are going to buy in. They're going to need guys that are going to Put everything in because this is this isn't going to be easy. Turning around the Jets is not going to be an easy task. So they're going to need strong-willed individuals, and they're going to need to find some diamonds in the rough. And again, you look at the Senior Bowl. There's a lot of good players that there will be first-round picks. Don't get me wrong in the Senior Bowl. But you look, a lot of the Senior Bowl risers are guys that we see go from being undrafted free agents to late day three picks to being quality day two picks. I think Quinn Maneras, the guard last year, was a great example. No one knew who he was, ends up going day two to the Denver Broncos and helps make an impact with them this season. So again, to me, the Senior Bowl, we talk about the high-end prospects, but this is an opportunity to see some of these low-end prospects some of these prospects that have gotten kind of overlooked. And again, even on teams like a Georgia, like an Alabama, like Ohio State, where we talk a lot about these young kids, we talk about these some of these higher prize recruits, we talk about some of these four or five star recruits. And again, there's some highly productive seniors that don't get the limelight and don't get the credit for doing the work that they've done. And being able to be on a stage here and performing could help them. I mean, you're seeing a bunch of power five guys, but then you're also seeing guys that are from the non power five guys who probably aren't seen a lot, probably that don't get as much attention and they can go out there and really do a strong performance. I mean, we've seen in the past where you see some of these, especially pass rushers or offensive linemen, like they go against power five offensive linemen and D linemen and they dominate and you're going, wait a minute, like, it's hard to judge their tape because you're saying to yourself, he, they're not going against great competition. But then when you see them going against senior power five and guys that could be first or second round picks and they're doing a great job, that could help elevate their draft stock. Um, BK Sal gets a window, not just into their ability, but their character and whether they'll fit with his vision. Huge opportunity. Can't agree with that more. Again, like Sal has said, like he wants people that live and breathe football. And again, even the guys they brought in last year, the free agents, that's what you heard. They're huge football guys. I mean, you saw the workouts that Carl Lawson does. You see the workouts that Corey Davis does. And again, it's unfortunate that they were hurt last year, but I do think attitude is a big part of what the kind of player that Robert Sala is looking for. 
And again, this is, I think, going to help dictate the board because Joe Douglas, it's one thing to scout and hear from coaches and players. Again, most coaches and most people are going to tell you the positive about other people. It's human nature. They're not, no one wants to talk down about someone. It's really a huge red flag when they do. So, like, if someone's saying, like, they're really not a hard worker, then that's a real red flag because usually people are not that blunt or honest. But you can't hide that in this opportunity. Again, the senior bowl is a good opportunity to see how people approach the game. Do they just view this as a scrimmage or a practice that they just kind of go through the motions and just go through and just it's not a big deal? Or do they treat this like any other day at the office for football? Do they treat this like any practice? Do they treat this like every game where they're going a thousand miles an hour, they're going a hundred percent. Again, I think it's a good read on players because again, some of these people, and I get it, they don't want to get hurt, they want to try to protect themselves, they don't want to go a thousand miles an hour. But again, in front of a coaching staff, you want to give your best impression. So, and like I've said too, the other benefit is it gives the Jets a more clear picture in the draft. They can look at a lot of these players that are on their board and can say, okay, we were on the fence about most of these guys. We feel pretty confident in most of these guys, and we can spend more money on two or three positions and get really A plus free agents. Or they come out and saying, look, there's some good players in this draft, but we're not going to be able to plug all the holes that we thought we were going to be able to. So instead of getting, you know, spending on three or four free agents, we're going to have to get six or seven spread out the money. But again, we need to make sure that we fill all the holes on this roster. So I do think that that plays into this. And I do think that that is a huge benefit of having this. Cause again, this is February 5th. Free agency doesn't start till March 16th. So the Jets can go over the board for a month and lay out a game plan. And Joe Douglas said in his press conference yesterday, he's going to be a lot more aggressive this offseason. And he also says he has assets that he can move to get players. Again, I really look at this draft, and one of the predictions I have is the more I've been sitting here and really going over this, I do believe the Jets are going to address the wide receiver position while I could see them addressing them in the draft, and even if they go out in free agency and get a receiver, I don't think they're going to just not get any receiver in the draft. But the more this goes on, I have the feeling that they're going to trade assets, whether it's picks or players, to get a veteran receiver or an experienced receiver to help with Zach Wilson's development, whether that's breaking the bank for Allen Robinson, who I think would be an unbelievable number one, whether it's trading a couple picks, later picks for Calvin Ridley, if they feel he's a safe investment, or is there another big-time receiver that a team doesn't want to pay that comes up? Again, I don't think Devontae Adams would come here just because I think he's going to go wherever Aaron Rodgers goes. But again, you know, we've seen crazier things happen. So I just have the feeling that the Jets, like I keep seeing a lot of people saying they're going to take a receiver in the first round. They're going to take a receiver in the first round again. If it doesn't work out in free agency, I think they will. But I just think that they're going to invest an asset that way. And again, I don't think they're going to stay at 4-10. and 10. I think one of those picks is going to be trade back to get more capital. And if you're going to trade back and get more capital, you have to have, you feel like, good depth and a good board that you have enough pieces. And I think the Senior Bowl helps with that in determining what you have in terms of staff. Again, there's a lot of good prospects in the Senior Bowl. There's a lot of guys you'll see their name called in round one, but there's also a lot of guys you're going to see definitely picked in round two or three. And there's also other guys that probably right now are day three picks. But if they have a good senior bowl, they do well at the combine or their workouts. Don't be surprised if you start seeing some of those names get pushed up and trending just because they get kind of overlooked. But again, there's a lot of decent safety prospects, tight end, especially is really there's a lot of tight ends at this senior bowl, which will be important for the Jets. Receivers a little thin, but again, this isn't the best receiver class, but maybe the Jets find someone they feel confident in rounds two or three. Some decent edge rushers, not the high-end ones that we see probably go top 15, but if the Jets move back, maybe they can get one of these edge rushers here. Again, a lot of linebackers in this one. One of my favorites is Chad Muma from Wyoming. He will be at the Senior Bowl. I really love his tape. And again, 
I put this poll on today, which player from the national championship would you want the Jets to draft? And then Nicobe Dean has really become a hot pick for the Jets. And I really love Nicobe Dean. But the question I have about Nicobe Dean is there's some really good linebackers in this class, like Utah's Devin Lloyd. I mean, there's some really good, like they're not Devin Lloyd, obviously, but there's still some good linebackers. Does it make sense to take a linebacker that high when they can get one layer? I mean, to me, Chad Muma could be a late second round pick, early third round pick. Again, I really love watching his tape. And the thing I really loved about him, he's a really good athlete, but he's a very instinctual player, very smart player which I think the Jets need more of on this defense. They need guys that take the right angles, that understand how to you know, close a gap. And to me, he's a guy that I really am excited to watch at the Senior Bowl. But again, there's there's going to be you know, 100-something players that basically the Jets will get to work with. And it's not even with their team. It's who they're going against. I mean, the Lions will have the other team. But just having that hands-on interaction, being able to talk with the players individually, see how they approach a situation, seeing how they adjust to situations, seeing how they make adjustments day after day. Like, does a D lineman, if he's going against certain offensive linemen, do they make some adjustments with how they counter with their hands, with how they plant their foot in the ground to get separation? Do they view that a certain way? Like, do they make those necessary adjustments? Or, again... Are there guys that just treat this like a practice and just a scrimmage and they're there, but they're just there to be there? Or are there guys that treat this like they always treat football, which is I'm going to go a thousand miles an hour. I'm going to make my mark no matter what. And I do think that those are the type of players that Robert Sala and Joe Douglas are looking for. But overall, like I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the chat again, guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, especially with all the Jets content coming out around the draft, our Twitter handle is in there. We've put some tweets out today about players you should keep an eye on. And of course, if we get close to the Senior Bowl, I will be tweeting about players that I really like standing out there. Again, first time the Jets have had the Senior Bowl since 1979. And you look right now, last time the Jets had the Senior Bowl, you look at the draft they had after that Senior Bowl, Marty Lyons and Mark Gastineau and Eric Cunningham were in that draft. So that's, it shows you like, and you look tech, usually, especially guy teams that have the senior bowl, they tend to do well, not just necessarily in round ones, but days two and three, because again, a lot of these guys are, most of these players are going to be guys that you're going to see go days two and three between rounds two and six. So this um, this is how I think they're going to do it again. I believe the Jets are going to address wide receiver outside of the draft because I think they are looking for a legitimate number one. And when I say that, I mean, could you make the case Calvin really is the number one? I just feel like the Jets with all their money and with all their draft capital would rather get someone that's a proven legitimate receiver in the NFL than taking a shot on someone in the NFL draft, especially when they're there. I mean, you look right now around the league, like they have to make Zach Wilson work. And again, if it comes down to this in the draft and when I do these mock drafts, some people disagree with how I approach it. But again, I have a feeling that when it comes down to it, th th that this coaching staff and this front office with Joe Douglas, they're tied to Zach Wilson because what was the common thread we saw on, on Black Monday in the NFL? The coaches and general managers that got fired were teams that didn't have a good quarterback or a good quarterback situation. I mean, you look around the league, and a lot of the firings you go, well, Mike Zimmer's a good coach. He just doesn't have a good quarterback. He's got Kirk Cousins. Brian Flores, you were shocked because you're like, He's a winning record with Tua. He's winning in spite of his quarterback. So again, I think they both they all need this quarterback situation to work. And I just have a feeling like if they're going to upgrade the wide receiver position, it's going to be through free agency or through a trade rather than the draft. Do you think the Jets would part with a first for a wide receiver? I don't think they need to. I, don't forget, 
the Bears are not going to franchise Allen Robinson again because of his contract. I think the Jets would pay a boatload for Allen Robinson. And again, like I was saying before with the Calvin Ridley episode, I just don't feel the Jets because he's got an expiring contract after next year. He's an $11 million cap hit, and then he's a free agent afterward. I really don't think the Jets – I think the most the Jets have to give up is three and a five, maybe, and that even seems a bit high. I mean, even Stefan Diggs. I mean, Diggs, the reason he was attractive was, again, he was under control – and kind of wanted out. And again, the Vikings, you needed to really make a good offer to get Diggs out of there because he, they were in a situation too where they had Adam Thielen. They had a good receiving core where like they weren't desperate to get rid of him. So you really need to come and be attract, have an attractive offer. So I don't think they'll have to part with a one. I mean, outside of Diggs, you really haven't seen ones. I mean, I know it's not accurate, but even DeAndre Hopkins went for a two. I know we all thought that was ridiculous, and even I still think that's ridiculous, but I don't think the Jets necessarily have to give up a one. But I do think they will be aggressive with the assets that they have. And again, the wide receiver pool just, I mean, we the two of the top receivers in the draft just shrunk last night. I mean, we were talking about two receivers potentially to the Jets in the top 10. Now it's down to one because I, I Williams is an ACL again you could still take him but is he going to be ready to go week one and the Jets need players to make an impact next year I mean they can't be waiting around for a receiver to come from an ACL and um you know I I like the more I keep looking at it, like I love the Kobe Dean but do the Jets take a player who could make a huge impact on the defense but you can probably get some decent linebackers land draft. I mean, there's a lot of things the Jets can do. But again, I don't think receivers. I still think you can get good receivers. I mean, I love Chris Olave. I love Burks. But again, I don't think either of them is really going to come in and be a bona fide one. I think they're going to be a high end two at least next year. They can maybe develop into one. But I do think the Jets need one for day one. Um, I don't see Terry McLaurin. I mean, that's a good suggestion. I love Terry McLaurin. And I mean, when we talk about the top five receivers in the league, personally, I think he is one of them. He never gets the credit. But again, I I don't think he's going to get traded from Washington. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what his uh, contract situation is. Like, I, again, they're in contract talks with him um, for a new deal. Again, if it doesn't work out where Terry McLaurin wants a huge deal and Washington doesn't want to give it to him, um, then I, I could see the Jets maybe swooping in there. That's a really good suggestion. I'm glad you have looked into that, but I'm just trying to pull up what the Washington's football number is next year. Um, just trying to figure out what their cap space is. Yeah, Washington's got $54 million in cap space. And that's before they even make any cuts. Um, so, again, I mean, I think they're going to sign Terry McLaurin before Brandon Sheriff, too. I mean, Sheriff's probably going to hit free agency before McLaurin. But, again, if McLaurin wants a huge contract and Washington doesn't want to give it to him, but Washington's also probably in a situation, too, where I think they're going to draft a quarterback next year because Heineke's – Heineke's proved he can play in the NFL, but you look at that division, you need a good quarterback. And I just feel like the Washington's going to be in the market for drafting a quarterback. So if you're drafting a young quarterback, why would you get rid of a wide receiver that's going to help his development? Um, was the Allen Disarray and Russ probably leaving? Maybe Matt Calf would be on the table again. I don't see Russ leaving. To me, Washington, uh, sorry, Seattle is in a situation where. To me, Seattle is going to do everything possible to keep Russell Wilson happy. I believe that they're going to move on from Pete Carroll before they move on from Russell Wilson. Because, again, no matter what draft capital you get for Russell Wilson, it's not going to be enough. I mean, we're talking about a Hall of Fame quarterback. We're talking about a guy that, when he's healthy, is an MVP candidate. And we saw this franchise without him being at his best. And when he's not really carrying the load, they're terrible. I mean, they were a bad football team this year. And again, people are saying, well, Russ didn't play well this year. Well, Russ probably shouldn't have been back with that finger injury he had. And he really rushed back to try to do his best. But again, 
I just have a feeling that, like, again, I, I just don't see it happening. I think Seattle's going to do everything in their power to make him happy, whether it's f- hiring a head coach he likes, whether it's, I mean, again, I think he would love an offensive coach. But if you were to t- tell Russell Wilson today, like, you look at the coaches out there, too. There's a lot of good candidates this year. I'm kind of surprised they haven't moved on from Pete Carroll again. If they keep Pete Carroll, I think Russell is gone because I think he's fed up. But again, I'm kind of surprised Pete Carroll hasn't just retired or they've moved on from him because there's a lot of good coaching candidates out there. Doug Peterson, if Russell wants a good offensive mind, there's Eric Bieniemy, there's Peterson, and then, of course, Brian Flores. I mean, there's some very good coaches out there that could help Seattle. Yeah, if I just said that if Seattle, I think Flores would be their target again. I think Russ would like an innovative offensive mind, and again, that's a really offensive-minded division. But that defense is a mess, and you've seen what Brian Flores has done in Miami. And again, Miami has better defensive pieces than Seattle, but I don't think they're overwhelmingly great defensive pieces. And again, he went nine and eight with Tua this year. And he went, I mean, after a 1-7 start and with all distraction, I mean, basically you had a quarterback situation in Miami where the front office was, the night before the trade-in line, had a meeting with Deshaun Watson. They basically let know, like, they want Deshaun Watson. And basically, as a head coach, you have to convince your quarterback to stay true and stay narrow, and they still went 9-8. and eight. They still finished. And again, Miami was probably the hottest team in the NFL at the end of the season. If Miami could have snuck into the playoffs, they probably would be one of the teams that no one wants to face because of their secondary, because of their running game. And look, he's beaten the Patriots four or six times. How many, What coaches beat Belichick four or six times? The only other coach that comes close is maybe Andy Reid just because of how innovative he is offensively or the Giants for whatever reason. But again, no one really beats them. So... A lot. Seattle's going to be a big thing. Like I, I'm going to be honest. A lot of these coaching searches. Like I thought Pete Carroll was going to be out. I'm still surprised he's got a job. I mean, Joe Judge at this moment still has a job. I mean, even the Texans. The reason the Jets got the Senior Bowl now is because the Texans haven't made clear what they're doing with their coach. So again, there's going to be a lot of turnover this off season. And depending on how it goes, I do think that the Jets can be in the market again. DK Metcalf could be an interesting play. If somehow Russ isn't there, but again, do they want to have a good receiver for a good young quarterback? And again, would DK do well in the new market? I mean, DK Metcalf physically is without question one of the most physically gifted receivers in the NFL. But again, there are times out there where you watch him play and you still you watch Tyler Lockett, and you almost feel like Tyler Lockett at times is a more dominant player in terms of how how many big plays he makes. Again, I'm DK Metcalf is an unbelievable player, but I mean, I just look at like the production. I mean, this last year took a bit of the, again. I understand the quarterback situation. But, uh, you know, again, career high in touchdowns with 12. If he's available, 24, I would make an offer to try to go get him. But, again, a lot depends on what happens in Seattle. I mean, the best thing for the Jets would be Pete Carroll stays involved. But the other thing, too, is the Jets in Seattle, now that you bring up DK, I wonder if – the, the Seahawks would refuse to trade with the Jets for a pride reason. Because, again, what have they been hearing from media and from basically, you know, their own fan base the last two years is that they got fleeced for Jamal Adams. They've heard it on all the national talk shows. And, again, this whole year it's been like, oh, you would have had a top 10 pick, but you traded for Jamal Adams. And you also had to pay Jamal Adams. I just wonder, would Seattle be leery about trading DK to the Jets because, or would they basically put an extra high premium? Would they basically require a first-round pick and something else for DK 
because they don't want to come out of it feeling like they got fleeced again. Because the feeling is, and you look nationally, most people feel like the Jets fleeced them. And even right after that trade, people were saying about Seattle, like, wait a minute, Jamal Adams basically requested a trade. Jamal Adams basically is saying he won't play for the Jets again. And you gave the Jets two first round picks, a starting safety and a third rounder for a guy that wants out. I mean, we look at trades. I mean, Khalil Mack, I know he went two first rounds, but I don't think he got the third. No, I think Khalil is slightly more. But you look at like players have gone for two first round picks. Khalil Mack went for about the same as Jamal Adams. And he's arguably one of the best defensive players in the league in a decade, especially rushing the passer. You look at Jalen Ramsey. I mean, he's the best lockdown corner in the NFL. And he went for two first round picks. And again, those guys, Khalil is getting a little bit toward the end of his prime. But again, Jalen Ramsey was in his prime. I mean, Jamal Adams, you look right now, if Seattle had to take a mulligan, they would because, again, they're paying him $72 million. The last two seasons, he's finished the season hurt or banged up. He's only played 12 games per season the last two years. And, again, this last season, the first season, he set the sack record, and he was their best pass rusher. This last year, zero sacks, had two interceptions, but they were two of the most gifted interceptions you will ever see. And basically, all you just saw on social media was all the plays of Jamal Adams just getting burned in coverage and basically talking about how they got fleeced for Jamal Adams. So, again, I think DK is a good idea, but I, especially if Pete Carroll's still in charge, I just feel like would Seattle feel like they get fleeced again by the Jets? And would that limit what they could do in terms of? great receiver and again like we're getting to that point where now teams you look at uh at guys that could use new contracts i mean we talk about terry mclaurin i mean quinnon williams was asked about the other day um so really you're starting to see guys from that 2019 nfl draft now they start to enter that time where do they get a new deal and do they get a new opportunity. So again, like we look right back at that draft. I mean, Quinton Williams is eligible for that new contract. So now I think it's important to look at the receivers from that draft. Are there a couple that potentially could be traded? They don't get a new deal. And of course, like Debo Samuel is one, but he's not that San Francisco is not getting rid of him. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, AJ Brown, I think the Titans, they're not going to move on from him. Um, DK Metcalf was obviously the big one. And uh, so is Terry McLaurin. But again, I don't think McLaurin's moving. I would love Terry McLaurin. But again, I just don't think they have cap space. Seattle's in is in a bad cap situation. So maybe they might feel inclined to get it. But again, if they're going to trade DK, they're going to want a haul. Like they're going to want, because he's only 24. I mean, to me, they're going to want multiple picks like they're gonna want a one and something so i mean if you're the jets are you willing to trade the 10 and probably like a fourth round pick and maybe an additional six round pick for next year to get dk i mean i wouldn't be opposed to that again if you get a receiver i mean again that also comes down to to like uh um the talent it's gonna come down to the contract too because again like I think actually now that I re say that I'm going to retract that a bit because again, I actually don't think you have to trade first round pick for DK because again, you're going to have to pay him. And it's kind of the same situation with Calvin Ridley, which is the nice thing about DK is there's a year of control and then he becomes a free agent. I mean, you could franchise tag him for a year, but he's going to want to get paid. He's going to get, get want to get the big money. So, and again, Seattle locked up Tyler Lockett. Um, so that does impact their cap. I'm going to just check to see really quickly, too, what the um, the cap number is for Seattle. I know it's low. Uh, I just want to make sure I can figure that out. No, actually, it's not too bad. They, they have $52 million in cap space, uh, basically – it's they have cap room, so they could extend DK. 
it's not too bad. I mean, the teams that are really in cap hell are the Giants, the Vikings, the Cowboys, the Packers, and the Saints. Um, you know, Michael Thomas, I think, is out of the question right now as a wide receiver. I mean, the problem with the Cowboys, too, is you can probably – Michael Gopp's going to be a free agent, but he's probably number two. I really love Adam Thielen from the Vikings, but again, and I mean, they got Justin Jefferson, but again, the Vikings, I just – Adam Thielen's such a popular player. I think it'd be hard. And again, Thielen's had some injury issues the last two or three years. And he's been a great compliment to the slot, especially when Jefferson, like he's at his best when there's another great receiver. I'm not sure how he would do as the true number one in that situation. Um, you know, I'm just going through teams. Um for true number ones. Again, it's hard. Like it's hard to find a legitimate number one wide receiver in the nfl but uh you know again guys thank you so much for joining us if you're new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button for more nfl draft content for more jets content and of course follow us on twitter the handle is in the top of the chat uh if you would like that let's see irv smith or noah fant would be a dream i mean oh i was like for a second i was i had a I was like, Noah Fan, like the Jets have, like they have George Fan. That's what it is. Um, yeah, like, are you talking about in a trade KD for Noah Fan? Again, Noah Fan was banged up this last year. Um, I think you look at the tight ends, right? OJ Howard's going to be a free agent again, buried in the depth chart for Tampa Bay. Uh, Hayden Hurst is a guy who I think is just a productive tight end. He's like a solid tight end. He'll, but again, he'd be he's better than anyone the Jets have had over the last five years. So um <coughs> sorry about that. Um so again, like he could be a guy that could definitely be in play. But again, like I think there's some decent tight end free agents. I don't think there's a really elite one. I mean, no Fant too. Again, like Fant's been good. To me, fans almost one of these players that I think we like him better than his production. I mean, his production's been okay, but I think we look at him because he's such a gifted tight end. Like we almost look at him and say, like, oh, he's a better tight end than his production says he is. I mean, it kind he kind of reminds me a bit like David and Joku. I mean, I look at their physical ability, and you're like, they could easily be top five tight ends in the NFL. And again, I understand they don't have great quarterbacks. That could limit their production. But again, I mean, I don't think the I don't think the Broncos are trading Noah Fant. Um, and again, Irv Smith could be an option for the Jets. I'm trying to remember if Irv Smith's a free agent this year. I have to check. I mean, I've done a lot of tight end research. Um again, uh I'm trying to see if Irv Smith's an unrestricted free agent or not. Uh no, he's only been two years in the league so he's not going to be on the market again i don't think the vikings are going to trade a tight end again i would not be shocked at the vikings i think they're going to select a quarterback like in the second or third round to try to develop under kirk cousins again kirk cousins isn't going anywhere so i think they're going to try to do their best to win with what they have now i mean they have i guess you consider a window to get to the postseason i mean i don't think they're going to win significantly in the postseason but again i think that they still believe that they have a window uh any other questions in the chat seeing a lot of likes thank you for all the love and support as always again make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything and of course follow me on twitter the handle at rich sports talk again we have a lot of polls up there on Twitter and, of course, our reaction. Like I put a couple players that the Jets should be looking at at the Senior Bowl when that does happen. Um, of course, put a lot of polls to get your reaction. We have on the channel today. And, of course, Nicobe Dean, one of the players you saw in the National Championship who you would like to see on the New York Jets. Um, and, again, retweeted this out today about the Jets picks fourth and 10 35th and 38th and 69 in the top three rounds an interesting tweet from Jim Nagy last time Robert Sala coached the senior bowl his team went to the Super Bowl the next season I don't think the Jets are going that far but it is a good trend going forward so uh again guys uh would love to hear what you have to say and of course poking fun of the New York Giants and their coaching situation from the other day um, still can't believe about 
Uh, Brian Flores was looking there at the chat a little bit too. But again, guys, if you haven't followed me on Twitter, go give it a follow. It's at the top of the chat. Uh, so you make sure you don't want to miss any of that. Uh, any other questions before we have today? Again, great news for the Jets. They win a coveted prize of getting to coach the Senior Bowl. And again, in a year where they have to hit in the draft and they have to have a crucial offseason and an offseason of gr- to have big success and make sure that they hit a home run, this just helps make that a little bit easier. Just having that access to players, having that ability to, again, not necessarily find the cream of the crop players. I think the top 20 players in the NFL draft stand out pretty much on their own. It's about finding the rest of the guys. It's about finding that diamond in the rough in the third or fourth round that becomes a key contributor next year or probably a starter. It's about finding maybe a safety they can use. Maybe it's a great situational pass rusher who isn't on the field every play but makes a huge impact on third down in passing situations. Maybe it's finding a starting safety so they don't have to find two starting safeties. Maybe it's finding a tight end or two that can help contribute and help with Zach Wilson develop. Maybe it's finding an offensive lineman like a Trey Smith last year for Kansas City, who they found the sixth round became a starter for them. Again, an offensive lineman that maybe doesn't start for the Jets, but is a valuable asset because they have a solid backup where if a guy has to miss a game or two, they don't have to worry about putting Connor McDermott at left tackle. They have a valuable guy that can play tackle, can play guard or play the three interior positions where if there's an injury, there's able to move around and get them. Um, KP dark horse candidate could be Adam Thielen. Just mention that again, Thielen, I would only be concerned about because look, I really love him. I think he's one of the most underrated players in the entire league. I mean, even on his own team, I mean, when we talk about receivers, always Stephon Diggs, and now it's Justin Jefferson. But the thing I would be concerned with him is he's going to be 32, and he hasn't been able to stay healthy the last couple of years. Again, great production this year, 10 touchdowns, 726 yards. But again, you look – after his two Pro Bowl seasons in 2017 and 2018 at 27, 28, you look the last three years, hasn't been a Pro Bowler. He's only played in 10 games, 15 games, 13 games. He's missed time, hasn't been the same receiver. And again, like you look at him, like he's at his best when he had a digs, when he has a Justin Jefferson, like when he's asked to be the solo number one target, you saw like his production. I mean, you look in 2019, his production went down to six touchdowns, 418 yards. Again, only played 10 games, but also was impacted because of the lack of talent. Then they get Justin Jefferson in the last two years, who's been unbelievable. You look at all of a sudden Thielen's stats goes up. So again, is he the league's best Robin receiver? And can he be Batman? I mean, I'm not 100% sure because, again, I'd also be concerned because he's going to be 32 and he's having some injury history. When injuries start to pile up, especially later in a player's career, I start to get concerned. Again, if I can get Thielen for a great price, I mean, if I get him for a trade where it doesn't really cost the Jets much, and again, I don't think Minnesota is going to do that because – I think you're going to have to overpay to get him, and I don't think Joe Douglas is going to do that. I think I think they're going to try to back up the Brinks trunk for Allen Robinson because he's in free agent. He doesn't cost the Jets draft capital or Calvin Ridley where they can probably get away with trading day three picks and a couple of them to get Ridley because of his contract situation and also because there's a little bit of a risk with the mental health. But again, I mean, it's hard to find a legitimate number one. I mean, the Bengals have three of them, but they're not trading any of them. Uh, Terry McLaurin, I don't think there's any chance Washington moves on from him. I mean, Mike Williams is a guy from the Chargers who I really like. But again, I'm concerned with Mike Williams because he's been unbelievable. But again, my question with him as a wide receiver going toward free agency is, you look at his jump and his success, really. I mean, he had a great 2019, and really that's when he started to come on the scene. But the last two seasons, like where he's been really good and this year where he's really popped off, it's been because he's had an unbel- like what we believe could be a top-five quarterback. And again, you look at his stats, too, like this past year, last two years – 11 games, 14 games. Again, still very good production, but do you worry about 
the injury percent again, he's targeted a lot and he doesn't necessarily come down with the football. I mean, only catch percentage around 56%. I mean, he's not one of those guys that's going to always come down with again. I think he is a great player, but still, despite having Justin Herbert and despite, you know, really improving, hasn't made a Pro Bowl again. Pro Bowl is, you know, I understand it's hard to make, but again, I mean, you look, his two best years really came like, this last two years have been his best, and that's when he said Justin Herbert. Again, it wouldn't hurt Zach Wilson's development because he's a talented player. He's a big receiver. He's a guy that can stretch the field. But still, um, I mean, could the Jets look at Traylon Burks? Uh, you know, Burks is a guy who's six foot three, great route runner. Again, I don't think he's the biggest burner in this draft. But in this system, you want great route runners. And Mike Williams, too, is a guy who I don't really see as a great route. Thielen's a great route runner, but I don't really see uh, Mike Williams as a great route runner. Yeah, that's Joe brought up a great point. Jets are not going after anyone 20 plus years. I mean, if they're going to, it's going to be on it's going to be free agency and it would be like the shorter term contracts. It'd be like a one or two deal just to fill out a whole like I could see him going with like a 30, 31 year old safety on a one year deal to fill up the safety position. I mean, Stefan Gilmore, despite his age, I could see the jets going in to get him as the number one corner, but I see him giving him like an insane deal where they give him like a high cap number, like 17, 18 million, but for a three year contract and likely kind of what they did with the Lawson contract and what would they did with the Corey Davis, which is basically front load the deal. So it's really a two year contract that they can get out of after the second year. So I could see them doing that. Um, but again, if they're going to trade for a wide receiver, it's going to be someone. Uh, Burke's run, running a sub 4-3. Um, it, it's weird, though, because like he's a fast guy, but like I don't – like just watching some of his tape, like he just doesn't seem to have the pull-away speed of like what Williams had. Um. I'll keep looking at it a little bit too. I'm really curious to see what he runs at the combine and his pro day. Um, but again, like I would not be upset with Burks, but my question is, do the Jets try to trade back to the teens or trade back a little bit more to get him? Like at 10, I wouldn't be upset. You're not drafting him at four, but 10, I mean, that could be something I could see them doing. Um, again, to me, he, he's a he's a very I think he's almost like the best fit in the draft. I mean, everyone talks about, you know, the Ohio State kid like I really love Chris Olave. I just think Chris Olave is such a good route runner that he really fits this system. But again, I mean, Burks is a bigger wide. He's more the X. He's more the traditional X because Olave six foot one, about 185, maybe 190. I mean, you look at Burks, he's 6'3", 225. I mean, he's that X receiver. He's that Y receiver, the big outside target that you want. He's, once again, more in the the build of, like, a Corey Davis. Like, he's more of a traditional outside receiver. Um, I mean, I'm interested to see what he runs in terms of the 40. Um, you know, I just – I don't know what his official is. I know some of the ones are expecting, like, the – four. if he runs a four two four three, I almost think, like you said – if he runs in that range, I do think the Jets would probably look to take him 10 because, again, if he can prove the speed. But, again, I also think the 40 is a bit overrated too because, again, we talk about the straight line speed. I mean, John Ross had the fastest 40 for a wide receiver, and he has not been able to be a protective receiver. And to me, what I like more about Burks isn't the straight line speed. I know that's the talking point. That's the headliner. That's the social media tweets after the combine. But, again, I look at more of the route running and can you create space? And Burks does a really good job of that. And I also like Chris Olave. I think Olave does that incredibly well. But again, Olave 6'1, probably a bit more undersized for an outside receiver. But again, I think he's a guy you could probably get in the 20s. He might even fall to round two, but it's all about cost management. Like if you think Olave there isn't much of a difference between the two in terms of their production, and you don't have to give up as much for Olave. I would maybe look at him, but again, Burks, Olave is going to come down to the 40 time. Unbelievable athlete. Um, 
and in some ways, I think he's going to push up at the top. Um, watch his tape; he catches everything. Like, no, he. You're right. He does. He does. He's very good at the one on ones. In the, I'm sorry, not the one on ones. Uh, you know, in traffic, he's very good. And again, he's reliable. But again, this is my question for Joe: is if they could get like Allen Robinson in free agency, or really a great receiver, or like a Calvin Ridley for a trade. I just feel like the Jets want a veteran. And look, it's not anything against Burks. Burks looks unbelievable. But again, I just think they want someone that's an established NFL wide receiver to help with Zach Wilson's growth. Because again, they don't want to take a chance on a guy. Even if it looks like it could be a a safe pick. I mean, we've seen a lot of receivers coming into this league and struggle and it really takes them sometimes a while, like sometimes two years to really get their footing. I mean, Jerry Judy started to look like he was supposed to look this year. And again, I think the Jets need someone to help from day one. And also the question, too, is if the Jets can fix the wide receiver position by giving away late draft picks or just paying for it in free agency, does that make more sense? Because, again, if you address that position in free agency or by trading a late round pick, you can then use that coveted first round asset to improve the team in another area whether it's offensive line pass rusher um could it be a playmaking linebacker like i know nicobe dean like at 10 if the jets could get him there he's just someone that makes a play all over the field and again you look last year and i know that it's not the same situation because the cowboys had good pieces on their defense but Michael Parsons really took them over the top because he was a playmaker and he did so many things for that defense. Couldn't a Kobe Dean on the Jets be one of those players that just makes an impact on all three downs, whether it's in the passing game, whether it's occasionally coming off the edge on the blitz, whether it's in the run game. Um, trade down draft. Burks at a second. Davis Moore, Burks, Barrio, signed Schultz. Again, like... If they could get Dalton Schultz, I'd love that. I think he'd be a great fit. Um, I'm guessing you're saying trade down from four, Joe. I'm not exactly sure because, again, Jets have two first-round picks. They could trade down from four or ten. <laughs> so, um, but, again, like, Joe, like, if the Jets have the opportunity, like, and I'm just going to address this to you, Joe, like, if they have the opportunity to get Allen Robinson, like Allen Robinson signs, in, the, Jet, the Jets are going to have to give him a big contract. But, again, if they get Allen Robinson or they could trade – a third and like a six round pick for Calvin Ridley. I mean, would that make more sense to you? Because again, you get a number one receiver and you get a guy who is a veteran, a proven player in the national football league that they can make a play and that they can work at this level and then use that asset in the first round to help another position. Cause the jets have a lot of holes and they have, they just need good playmakers. They need good talent. And again, Burks is great talent. I'm not disputing that. And like, if he's, if the, like I'll say this, if they take Burks with the first round pick and they don't add another receiver for agency, I wouldn't be upset with that. Again, you need Zach Wilson to work. And if you feel Burks is going to give him a big, reliable target on the outside that can run a great route. It opens up the middle so Elijah Moore can run across the middle. It helps Corey Davis because then they have to shift the coverages a little bit, give him some more one-on-one matchups. Again, that could be beneficial. But if you, um, if you, but if you can get a legitimate number one, I just think it could be something to look into as well. And it just gives the Jets another draft asset. So just when you see if Joe responds to that one. Um, let's see. Because again, like I'd love to hear what you guys think. Would you actually should do that? I'll do that as a poll later this week. Like, would you rather have the Jets address the wide receiver position via trade via free agency or via the draft. Um, Because I do think they could go either way. Again, I just have a feeling, and from what I've been following from a lot of the guys that cover the team, is they have a feeling that Douglas is going to address the receiver position, but it's not going to be through the draft. And usually they're pretty spot on with that, especially when Douglas yesterday in the press conference was saying he's not afraid to move assets to get players now, which is something he's never done. 
again, I just feel like the Jets would take a risk on a defensive player or a pass rusher in the draft because their prize and one in free agency are available via trade. But they want to make sure they get someone, a proven receiver that works in the NFL, that has, you know, the pelts on the wall, that's a good wide receiver. And I just think that that's the way they're going to address it. Now, again, if they can't do it, the draft is a good fallback because they can find a good receiver in the draft. Again, I don't think it's a good receiver draft this last year. I don't. There's no Jamar Chase. There's no Devontae Smith. There's no Jalen Waddle. I mean, as good as these players are as the wide receivers in this draft, they're not as good as those top three. So, again, I think part of it, too, is fans are falling into this trap a little bit of, well, last year's wide receiving glass was so good, and look at the impact they made. And look at, like, the Jets got Elijah Moore, and he's looked great in the second round. I mean, you look at a lot of those players, and they, they've made a big impact. I mean, the scary thing is Cardarius Tony, who – I didn't love last year. I think many scouts would probably put him as a top three receiver in this draft, maybe top two. And again, I'm not a big fan of him. But again, I just think last year's receiving class was a better class. And again, I I know we've seen the impact that Jamar Chase has had on Joe Burrow. I don't think there's a question. But again, there's no Jamar Chase in this draft. There, There just isn't. So again, if the Jets can get a veteran wide receiver... I think that's the way to go. But again, guys, the big news, Jets have the Senior Bowl. I think this is going to be huge for them going forward. Really excited about that. Of course, we'll give you all that Senior Bowl coverage, players that did well at the Senior Bowl, and, of course, Senior Bowl prospects that the Jets should have a keen eye on. All that's coming up and more, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. But again, guys, thank you so much for joining us here today. Looking forward to seeing you next time here on Rich Sports Talks. Have a good one, guys.